Ah, look, this is this is actually going to be a tough topic. Talking about abuse of power, and unfortunately, this is kind of abuse of power at like the highest degree, and and, and the worst case. And there's there's actually a few different angles that that we we can look at uh, this situation, and I absolutely hate hate having to talk about poor leadership within the church. I hate it. I don't do this with joy and I don't do this for clout. I'm not chasing clout. I'm not doing this to prove how good I am and and, and to talk down at those people at all. Once again, remember, we don't know the situation. We don't know what the actual facts are. We can only you know surmise from, from the outside. So I just want to talk about the situation without really attacking the person, but it is really, really sad to be able to talk about a situation especially in the ministry of abuse of power. And unfortunately, we see it way, way too often. And I want to talk about a story that I actually saw on 60 Minutes. Um, This was a couple of weeks ago, I think it was released. And it was a story that 60 Minutes released about Jerry Furwell. And as always, all the links are below, all the links of yeah, below or whatever um, of of all the of all the resources and all the articles that we're talking about and all the videos that we're referring to. This was a story by um, by sixty minutes talking about Jerry Falwell Jr. and his abuse of power and how he abuses power. Unfortunately, this was a story of a um, he was Jerry Falwell. Junior was the son of Jerry Falwell, who who was very big in the you know, evangelistic uh, circles, very massive in the in the ministry circles, in the church circles, very influential. Jerry Falwell Junior was uh, CEO of um, of uh, Vic. Uh, sorry. What was the name of the university? Liberty. Liberty, Liberty. University. I don't know why yeah. I was about to say Victory. I'm like, no, no, Liberty University. And um, and this is a very sad story that Jerry and his wife um, seduced a, a young boy and um, and got into, let's say, an inappropriate relationship with this. Well, sorry, when I say young boy. He was, well, he was a man. He was he a young was, man. He was, he, he he was, was a young 20. man. <laughs> let's, he was let's a young that. man with a brain who could have said no. Let me say that. But anyway, but, uh. <laughs> yes. So I do actually. Yeah, you're you're right, Doctor. Right. There are there are two there are two sides to this that I that I actually do want to want to kind of look at is one the position of Jerry Falwell as a leader and 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 his abuse of power. But I do actually also want to talk about. Uh, Giancarlo Granda, I think that's how you pronounce his name properly, who was the victim in this. And I say victim, he was he was victimized de- definitely, but he has some responsibility as well. So Jerry Falwell Jr. um and his wife Becky got into an inappropriate relationship with this uh with this young man. Um Used their their influence to to kind of give him give him benefits and and buy buy a hotel for him to manage and kind of like just showered him with opportunities and and everything like that and all the while with in an in an inappropriate relationship um, and uh, let's just say not a Christian relationship and not very definitely not moral and. You know, and also was somewhat, let's say, influ- according to this document documentary, was influential in kind of backing Donald Trump and 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 kind of opening Donald Trump to the evangelical Christian vote, um, etc. Now, whether he was a hundred percent responsible for it or whatever, like who who knows? But Doctor Rod, there is definitely when you hear and you listen to this story. There's, there's just all this. Just it is an abuse of power of like just using your power to give it, give other people opportunities to give you know. Kind of going back to that story that like that you know what we're talking about before is like, yeah, when you got power and influence, don't you want to be able to help those people around you? And 
Where's the line? Look, you know, you could write a book about this. There is there are so many angles on it. But look, Craig, I, I think really the most important point I, I would like to make is this. And I'm speaking to anyone who is a leader or who aspires to be a leader. If God has given you a vision, or if you've had a vision passed on to you, in this case by Jerry Fowell Sr., mm-hmm. you are a steward. Mm. That is a sacred role. Uh, in Jerry Fowell Jr.'s case, he was stewarding the university, Liberty University, yep. Christian University, uh, and stewarding a large and very influential evangelical community. Yep. And he's quoted as as admitting himself that he was a king maker yes. and had significant influence mm-hmm. over the election of of um, Donald Trump to the presidency. I, that might be a slightly exaggerated claim because some of the data show that probably the evangelical vote wasn't as important as people would like to make out. But nevertheless, there was a lot of support for Donald Trump among evangelical circles. Mm-hmm. And Jerry Falwell Jr. was not just a leader of a congregation, but he was a leader of leaders as well. Mm-hmm. Now, part, one of the issues is the way in which he husbanded financial resources. Mm-hmm. So there's an allegation that he spent something like $5 million to buy up a resort for one Carlos to, to manage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that in part was was a deal done to keep him quiet following the sordid sexual affair he had with, with Becky Fowell, mm-hmm. to which she has admitted. Yep. She's admitted that publicly. So we're not sort of telling tales or gossiping here. Now, that is not the exercise of stewardship. Yes. That's $5 million of money that God released for kingdom purposes that was not used for kingdom purposes. It was used for personal reasons. Mm. Second, uh, engaging in this case in sexual impropriety undermines the standing of the whole church and that means Mm. it undermines the standing of God in the community. To say nothing of hurting thousands if not millions of Christians who looked up to this couple as, as as leaders. So they failed monumentally and have admitted at least some of this, they failed monumentally as stewards appointed by God to look after people and to look after resources. And, and leaders, look, if you want to be a leader and particularly If you're a leader to whom God has given a vision, and all the textbooks would say a good leader has vision, if you've got a vision from God, then you are the steward of that vision, and that's a very serious role to have, and you need to take it very, very seriously. Yeah, that's good. And and, and so talking to leaders, obviously, let's, let's say on the Jerry side of this at the moment, if you're a leader and th- if they were influencing this young man, right? They they were using their 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 power, their influence, their their money. They were using all of that to really influence him. And yes, but it was for for personal reasons. For personal, yeah, exactly. Not for reasons like, that are. That's right. Yeah, yeah like we, we need to be very careful that we're not trying to influence young people, like influence the people we're leading for our own personal gain because this was purely because of their, like like you said, they bought this $5 million hotel for him to manage. Now, that's that's a nice thing. If that's our purpose and that's what God's called us to, to do is to help people like that, but they were doing it purely to try to keep this guy on the hook or or to kind of, you benefit a person that they were that they were in, you know trying to trying to seduce this 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 young man or whatever like 
it's it's actually we need to be very careful of we can get caught up in we want to help people we're wanting to you know we're wanting to to bro- like do, do all the give people opportunities that's great but are we doing it for personal gain and if we're doing it for personal gain that's where you know, no matter how good of a of a deed you're doing if you're doing it for personal gain then that's that's a big red flag that's a warning it's okay to be helping people and where you want to be out the people around you should as a leader everyone around you should be benefiting you shouldn't be sucking from everyone like you should be giving to people like everyone should be, be- you as a leader people should benefit from being around you whether it be benefit financially, benefit by by growing personally, ben- benefit by growing in knowledge and experience, they should be benefiting and we should be facilitating that benefit. But if we're only benefiting, giving them benefit to keep them on the hook for our own personal gain, to, to kind of cause them to be reliant on us, something that Dr. Rod has mentioned previously around, um, you know, us being the provider for people. Remember, we're not provider. God's the provider. So we've got to be very careful that we get caught up in these in these moments of of well I need to help this person like well are you being the provider or are you allowing God to provide through that person or are you just doing it for personal gain those those are some big red flags that we need to need to be be very careful of so so we as leaders make sure we're not abusing our power to to you know, try to try to take advantage of people to try to uh, seduce people to try to yeah you know, for our own personal gain. Big, big warning sign. Big, big warning sign. Don't do that. Like Dr. Rod said, steward the opportunities, the resources that God has given you. But let's talk about the other side because I I think it was very, very apt, Dr. Rod, that you that you brought this up before. I was like, well, he was an adult and he 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 could have said no. Yes. And this, I do want to get to this because too often we can get caught up in victimhood and, oh, well, they had so much power and influence. Well, this is something that we as two ICs or up-and-coming leaders, I see too many too many up-and-coming leaders or aspiring leaders or people that have, have an incredible uh, future and an incredible calling, they get trapped and they get caught under, you know, leaders that are they get blinded by the light, so to speak. They get they get you know blinded by all the fame and 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 all the benefits. Giancarlo should, could have said no. He yeah, you know, obviously he didn't have the the moral standings that we do. So he he said yes at the first stage where he shouldn't have even been in that hotel room. Shouldn't have even you know like if you had some moral standings, you like if you had some right you know, you had some you know good moral grounds and rules that you follow, you wouldn't have even been in that hotel room to even start this thing. But you're right. He had the power to say no. He should have said no. And we should not give up. We as to our season aspiring our leaders, we shouldn't be blinded by the opportunities that are presented to us. We shouldn't you know, give up our, our values our moral standings, we shouldn't give up that for an opportunity. Don't start blurring lines. Look, I know I'm on a bit of a rant now, but yeah, that's I, my own story. I know that I was raised in church and I was heavily dedicated, full, fully in love with Jesus and and um, dedicated to the church. I was you know, you know, used to preach in church even from a young age. I was heavily involved and volunteered and I kind of like, I knew that was my life. And then when I was 18, I blurred one little line and then another line got blurred and then another line got blurred and another line got blurred. And it's so easy to get caught up. I I then found myself in a place where literally I was days from ending up in jail. And luckily, luckily I had a supernatural encounter with God that protected me from that situation that allowed me to you know, warned me and 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 I chose chose to go a different path and was saved from that um from that uh you know from the 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 path that, that I was gonna take me to. But I know it was because I blurred one line, I blurred another one, I and I just made excuses along the way. And so be very careful as as a as a young leader, as someone aspiring, that you're not blurring those lines because you're chasing 
a benefit. Dr. Rod, how do we, now this is, really put your, your business pastor's hat on, right? How do we avoid blurring lines for the chasing the benefit, the fame, the glory, the, the opportunities that, because when you're young and influential, and when I say young, like I still consider myself young and when I get around some leaders, I, I kind of find myself, I have to check myself to go, what am I, am I, you know, too susceptible to, um, to, to, you know, poor influence here. How, how do we avoid blurring those lines? First of all, you've got to know where the lines are, I think. Good. I and, like that. Um, that. That's, that's really important. Know where the lines are. So you, you can't really go into business without knowing what your bottom line is. And I, I don't mean profit here. I mean, what am I not going to compromise? Yeah. And the Old Testament has plenty to say about things like accurate weights and measures and, mm-hmm. you know, giving the labourer his due and all, all kinds of things. Don't muzzle the ox when the ox is working. All, all kinds of things, which I think give some pretty good guidance in terms of how you should undertake business. So you've got to know where the lines are. And uh, because if you don't know where they are, you're going to blur them, that's for sure Mm -hmm. and certain, because they won't be lines at all. They'll be big fat sausages. Yes. Um, So I think think that's that's quite important. And and, and look, it's going to help to have some wise mentors around you. Maybe Mm -hmm. mentoring isn't the right, but just some, gather some people around you who can share wisdom with you. I think that's important. Make sure you've got people who are praying. For you, um, some people have intercessors, and I think that that's that's probably a good idea. Uh, and by the way, um, if you've if you've got people who are putting hours and hours every week into praying and interceding for you, um, you should be paying them as well. Mm-hmm. And we we can have a long discussion about that another day. But I, I don't think that you should just expect people to give up hours and hours of their time to pray for your business or yep. to intercede for you and um, not recognise that they've, they've got bills to pay. But anyway, that's mm-hmm. that's another issue. Um, and, and look, when, when you've got an inkling that something isn't right, just don't do it because, yeah. you know, you said you just blurred the line once and then you compromised and compromised and compromised and ended up in a place where you didn't really want to be. Yes. And you see this in business as well. People end up in a place where they don't want to be and uh, they're compromising on the quality of their product. Maybe they're abusing their staff but not paying them the legal rate. Maybe they're cheating on uh, the tax that they pay. A whole range of things. Mm-hmm. So you've got to be you've got to be pretty certain right at the outset where your bottom line is, and and know for sure and certain you're not you're not going to go below that, as as yeah. it were. That's really really important. But you know what? You need someone to hold up your arm. Just like yes. uh, just like Moses had, Moses said, Aaron, you need a few Aarons around you. You need a few people who can offer you some wisdom. You need some people who will pray for you. And uh, I think that's really important because it's pretty tough being in business. You know, it, it's not easy. Uh, we look around and see so-called successful people in business. We don't know their story. We don't know that you know they might have been bankrupt three times before they ended up succeeding. Yeah. So, you know, we, we just got to make sure that we know where the lines are and we've got people around us who can help us stick to those lines. Yeah, that's good. Like you are for me, you know, the the business pastor, Dr. Rod, that's what I love about having you on on my board and in my and in my life is you know, we, we speak, yes, we speak on this podcast every every week, but we also speak afterwards and we're constantly speaking about other, you know, other things and to make sure I keep in check, you know, I've got my, my intercessors, I've got my psychologist, I've got my, you know, I've I've got the people that are speaking into into my life and making sure that I keep that right. I just wanted Can to I, kind of share. Yeah. Go, Sorry. Go, Doctor. A couple of things I do I, I do want to say is, uh, and one of this, this came out from the interview, Juan Carlos was talking about being groomed. That makes him mm. a victim. No, 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 no. Listen, in business, we're not victims, all right? We're yes. not victims. We're not being driven to do things by our competition or by our circumstances. So we've just got to forget victimhood isn't something that Christians should ever label themselves with. They should never be victims. You yes. know, the Bible tells us we're actually victorious. We're victorious in Christ. Even if we're going bankrupt, we're mm-hmm. still 
victorious in Christ. We're not the victim. Certainly, our circumstances have influence on our outcomes, as do our attitudes. But we mustn't think of ourselves as victims because we we just can't succeed. We can't rise up and meet the challenges if we think we're victims because as soon as we become a victim, everything that happens to us is somebody else's fault. Well, the thing is, is is if you're a victim, you literally have no power. Like you're saying you have no power. So if, if you're acting like a victim, you're saying that you you're you're giving your power to someone else. You have no power. And we're talking about abuse, use or abuse of power. You're not using your power. If you're not taking ownership for the situation, if you're not not taking ownership and saying, yep, you know what? I said yes to it. I was seduced. I made the decision to go up. He said yes to that. He said yes to the next trip. He said next yes to the to the opportunity, he, even though he said, oh, you know, I was, I, I, I felt uncomfortable and I didn't want to do it, but he still went into business with them. Like, it, like you know, it's, it's, you're right, like, we can't play the victim anymore. We have to, we have to take ownership and, and take the power back. Let, let's talk about abusing, abu- people abusing power over us. Well, let's take our power back and use our power to make the right decisions. Uh, I think that's, that's really good, Dr. Rob. That's really good. You using using your your power, don't don't give it up as as a victim. One thing I like I did want to say, like Dr. Rod said about you gotta know where your lines are. And in business, we talk about this quite a lot with Dr. Rod, is it's your values. You you have to have your guiding posts, your 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 guide, your 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 guide, your guiding posts along along your your path, your markers to make sure you know where you're going to go in business and the decisions you're going to make. They have your core values. You have to have your core values. One thing I do with all my clients, we set our core values. Actually, just today I was in a session with a client and we referred back to their you know, a number of times. They're trying to make a decision for, on something. We just kept referring back to their values. Well, how does that line up with your values? We're trying to create you know, a new path forward for for a new a new uh, branch of their business, making sure we integrate our values so we do it properly. Do you need to know what your core values are, and you have need to have them written down and be as part of your your everyday business decisions. But also personally, you need to know what your values are. You need to know what your where the lines are. And I'll tell you what. Like I said, I blurred one line, I blurred another line, and I blurred another line, and I end up in a totally place that God did not want me at all. And so when I re when I came back to Christ and kind of reset and and kind of realized my 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 ways and 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 realized how big God's grace is, I sat down and I literally wrote out a list. Like, I'm like okay, the next time I date someone, these are my I, I went to write 10 commandments of, of how to date someone. I end up with 11. These are my 10 commandments for myself of how to, and they end up being 11, of how I'm going to date. You know, I'm not going to be alone with them at night. I'm not going to be find myself laying down with them. I'm not going to, you know, like, they're just like, these are my, I know that these are my lines because as soon as I cross that line, I know that that's going to be a a, a, a sticky, you see, that's blurring the line. I know that that just leads to something else. So make sure even for your dating, for, for business, everything like that, make sure you're outlining what are your lines? You got to know what your clear lines are, because if you don't know what your clear lines are, it's very easy to blur them. Hey, you've just watched an excerpt from the On the Cube Leadership Podcast. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If it challenged your leadership or inspired you in some way, put a comment below. And if you want to watch the full episode or more content like this, check out our channel. And hey, consider subscribing while you're there.